The Innovators Network. Welcome to the Killer Innovation Show, the longest continuously produced podcast in history. Each week, Phil McKinney brings you the insights and strategies to amplify your creativity and innovation skills. Here's your host, Phil McKinney. Welcome to my studio. This is the studio that I have been using for the last five or six years um, for the podcast. And when we were on radio, it was also my radio broadcast studio. But it's also my innovation studio. It's all one big space. Uh, I have about 1,200 square feet that um, I do my own projects. I also uh, help other companies that are working on uh, developing their own innovation. So um, this is the first of what I hope will be um, upcoming shows and actually giving you more of an opportunity to see the studio and see how I work and see how I go from blank sheet of paper to actually developing um, innovations and turning those into products and services that actually ship. Today's show, we will go into sh looking at the books that I keep close by. This is a collection of books that I use as part of the inspiration. Now, this isn't the entire set of books. I literally have thousands. I've got bookshelves that go all the way to the back of the studio that have uh, books on them um, going back many, many years. This is just the a quick sampling of those books. And they cover a wide range. They cover everything from, you know, Frank Lloyd Wright books to architecture design books to creativity books, uh, human interactions, th creativity thinking skills like Edward de Bono's book. And I'm going to go through each and every one of these books in today's show. So again, this is about inspiration. This is about giving you some some thoughts about how I use uh, materials and that sitting around my studio to inspire me when I'm working on uh, developing innovations, projects, or ideas. Um, we will have all of the uh, titles of the books in the show notes, so you want to check that out. Um, and also, before we get started, before we jump into the, the episode today, don't forget to subscribe. Go ahead, subscribe right now so that you get this and the shows. We've been doing the show now for 15 years, over 15 years. We're gonna, we're in season 16. We will click over to season 17, March 1st. Um, so you, you, you wanna subscribe, you get all that back catalog to listen to uh, also, but, uh, and also uh, like and share. Uh, it helps us uh, with uh, growing our subscriber base. Uh, we are the longest continuously produced podcast in history. Uh, we're proud of that. We get the, the award for uh, tenacity and uh, endurance. We've been doing this uh, nonstop since 2005. So, uh, so do that for me, will you please? Go ahead and subscribe, like, and share. And with that, let's jump into today's episode. This episode is sponsored by Zoom. With Zoom, you can streamline your communication, collaboration, and creativity all in one place. Zoom is the market-leading platform that provides video meetings, voice, webinars, and chat across desktops, phones, tablets, and conference room systems. To learn more about Zoom and sign up for your free account, visit KillerInnovations.com slash Zoom. Welcome to my studio. You know this as the studio that I do my broadcast from, uh, the podcasting, uh, webinars that I do, et cetera. But what you probably don't realize is this is also my innovation studio. So the whole studio is outfitted uh, with everything from uh, hardware gear, where I have uh, built prototypes using Raspberry Pis to um, uh, my sketchbooks, my um, uh, models, uh, different types of materials. I collect different materials that may result in products being um, used or, or designed or prototyped for, for other companies. Now, you may think because I'm a CEO, why, why do I have an innovation studio? And that is because I still do uh, projects, side projects 
um, for other businesses. I typically don't get take pay for them. I'm usually doing them for friends or, or acquaintances or people that I know. Uh, but it keeps me sharp. And, uh, uh, you know, and I'm on a bunch of advisory boards. And as a result of that, I'll, you know, whip together some concepts, some ideas, and some uh, prototypes. But the question I get a lot is, is what do I use as inspiration? What are the things that I keep handy in my studio when I need to be inspired, when I need to be coming up with new sets of ideas? Well, I am uh, a very visually oriented innovator. Uh, I originally went to college to study architecture at the University of Illinois. I switched to computer graphics. Um, albeit I'm a software engineer, uh, I, I am very visually oriented. And so for me, it's uh, inspirational materials are things that, 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 that kind of you know, tickle that, that creativity bone in me, and they tend to be uh, visually oriented. So what I'm going to share with you is those books, specifically books that I keep close by. They're piled up on top of my desk. I've got bookshelves lining the entire uh, studio. Um, but the books was what I find. When I need inspiration, I'll go pull uh, a handful of books out and I will use those as um, my, uh, my inspiration. So I'm going to walk you through some of these books and give you um, kind of a little bit of the background as to why. Now, I'm not going to be able to dive into a lot of detail, but I'll give you the reason why these are. Now, I'm going to go from the very general, right, books not directly related to innovation or creativity. And as we go through the list of books, I will get more and more and more specific. Um, so, uh, and we will have a list of all the books uh, that, I'm sh that I'm talking about here. Um, in the show notes. So don't feel like you got to scratch out notes or whatever, but it's more about explaining to you how I use books um, as, a, as an inspiration. So the first book up is the Visual Encyclopedia of Frank Lloyd Wright. As I said before, I originally uh, went to college. I was going to be an architect. I grew up in Chicago. Every kid in Chicago, that's got any form of a uh, visual orientation. Was very familiar with Frank Lloyd Wright. That's where he started his career, and as a result, um, uh, everybody wants to be the next Frank Lloyd Wright, and that's what I was planning to go to college for. Now, why do I use this particular book? What is it about it? Well, one, I'm an arch I, I'm I'm really in love and fascinated by architecture. I've probably have visited. Um, most, if not all, of the uh, Frank Lloyd Wright uh, buildings or buildings built by Taliesin, um, which are which were his apprentice, apprentices or interns, whatever term um, you want to use. Um, but for me, it's about reminding me to create your own style. Don't do what everybody else does, and that's where. Frank Lloyd Wright really set himself out right off the bat was by through the fact that he created his own language, his own design style, his own sense of aesthetics, his own kind of prioritization of importance, the feeling that you get when you walk into um, a Frank Lloyd Wright building is completely different than you would have in, uh, in any other building. And so as a result, for me, it's not so much I'm, he's got product ideas in here that I could kind of riff on, but it's more about that reminder of non-conformity. Don't do what everybody else does. Create something in your own language. Now, the next book I want to talk about is one called A Pattern Language. Pattern Language comes from Christopher Alexander, professor at UC Berkeley. Now, I don't even know. I, haven't, I didn't bother to you know, look this up to see. You know, so the original copyright is 1977. Now, what this is, is, is this is um, a study in a book that breaks out all of what's called patterns that you find um, in if you were doing a systems planning approach to buildings, houses, um, even cities. 
This is one of a multi-book series. I own all of them. Um, and what really got me triggered on pattern language, though, was that this book was the book that was used by the developers of the original Sim games. So the Sims, where you create your own people, you designed your houses, you built communities, um, etc. The developers who were building those games actually tapped into what's in this book and in the other series from Christopher Alexander, along with all of his uh, co-authors, um, around what makes for a certain kind of a structure around town, cities, um, central areas in um, in an area. Uh, how do you think about the balance between residential, commercial, um, things like sporting areas or shopping centers, et cetera. So, and again, this is not so much being, a, I can't, you know, you can't take what's in this book and directly apply it to a new product or a new service, but it helps you, me think about the fact that there are these patterns. There are patterns that make uh, and generate a certain kind of a feeling, a certain kind of an experience. And that is, uh, that's what this reminder is. And actually, it's quite interesting because there's a number of things in this book that does uh, take into account um, how to create that feeling. How do you create a feeling of excitement around um, uh, walking into a space or experiencing something? So, again, pattern language, Christopher Alexander. Not sure <laughs> how easy, how hard it is. Um, to create this book. I've had this book forever. And when I bought it, it was, oh, let's see, $49.95. So who knows what what they're charging now. Um, but I've got the entire collection of this, and it's, it keeps a, a prominent position on my bookshelf. The next book I wanted to talk about was one called Designing Interactions, um, put together by uh, Bill Mugridge. And you can see by the list of all the authors down the left-hand side, it's a hardback book, um, but it's about how do you design experiences. And it takes the experiences from a variety of different experiences. So, in fact, we just talked about Chris Alexander. Will Wright, who is the developer of The Sims, used the uh, pattern language book that I just showed you. And it actually talks a little bit about it here in how they developed the game, what was the original concept, what was it they were trying to do, how they do the design work, um, et cetera. The one area of particular interest that I wanted to point out um, was uh, Dennis Boyle and the development of the Palm 5. If, uh, if you're old enough to remember the, the Palm uh, product lines and the hand springs and then the trio, uh, which became the phone, um, for it, the accessories like cameras, um, and then, uh, uh, you know, ultimately resulting in the product. I was always a big palm, uh, in love with it. And I had the opportunity when I was the CTO for Hilo Packer to actually buy palm and bring it into, uh, HP. I was part of that, uh, executive team that negotiated the deal. I led the technical due diligence. Um, to acquire WebOS and um, the overall products. This is a great book because it gives you actually, it's a single book, but you get a wide, wide range. It's got like the original work on uh, dealing with things like Google, etc. Great book. Good one to have in your library. Again, it's a pretty big book, but it, I have it and I keep it in a a uh, pretty prominent place. The next book I want to talk about is The Universal Principles of Design. And this is talking about, it's kind of the uh, collection of all of what I would call the uh, design rules that you should. Now, there's a lot of other books out there that um, maybe even are a little bit more current on this, but, um, you know, this is a, uh, a case of not only showing you what to do, but also where uh, problems crop up in the form of uh, 
what doesn't work. Um, you know, for instance, it talks about even things like how do you design your user interfaces for your menus in correlation to um, the importance of placement of accelerators and brakes in cars, knowing that consistent pattern movement when you're moving from your foot from the accelerator to the brake plays out in user interface designs and things like that. Again, another one to kind of um, uh, give you some some good insights. Um, I've actually over the years I've developed checklists out of this book and the designing interactions, and I use those checklists. Um, you know, literally as a way to, uh, you know, think about, um, uh, what not to do, what things to avoid, those kinds of things. Now, this is actually the second book in a series from Michael Machalko. This book is called Crack and Creativity. The one prior to that um, is one that uh, most everybody um, has, which is Thinker Toys. And Thinker Toys is, if you don't have it and you're in the innovation space, go get it. Just get it. Um, Michael has done a phenomenal job of really literally collecting up all the, the tools, all of the approaches, all of the uh, ways of running brainstorming and the use of Scamper and thousands of other kinds of it. In this case, um, you know, and you can tell, I mean, I've actually got underlines in this book. It tells you how often I, I go back and refer to this. Um, but again, um, this is kind of a reminder less about the specific tools, but actually walks you through um, uh, and then, you know, of, of, uh, coming up with new ideas. In fact, here's one that says, you know, cut up your, the indexes of your books and throw those fragments into a fishbowl and then randomly pull them out and use those as sparking, um, points, right? And I put it, my comment here is possible software system could, could create a book or create a, uh, an application or a tool. Um, but, uh, Again, you know, I, I, I have this book. I have Thinker Toys. It's actually, I've lent it out to somebody. Um, so I didn't have it or I would have been showing that one. I also have the Think Pack, which are the, the cards that go with Thinker Toys. Pretty much anything um, Michael puts out, I buy. So he's one of those authors that gets it. He's a great, great, great collector of creativity and innovation tools that everybody can use and he explains them in a in a very clear and concise way so anything he anything michael produces go ahead and get it and then the other book in the kind of creativity space that i uh love is the six thinking hats from uh, dr debono now Dr. DeBono uh, doesn't never realized that I haven't never had never had a chance to meet with him, um, and I haven't followed his career most recently. I mean, he he has put out books periodically, um, but um, I kind of got turned on to the whole creativity and innovation space by a TV show that he did with that was broadcast on the U.S. PBS stations back when I was a kid and I uh, programmed my parents VHS tape recorder. I taped the show. Um, it wasn't always reliable. I drove my parents nuts to make sure I was home. So I could watch it, have my notebook out so I could take notes. And he basically taught over a series of, I think it was like six or seven shows a small audience of everything from kids to adults, men, women, um, different things about unleashing your own creativity. And I just loved it. I loved it. And that's what kind of sparked me into eventually going in and uh, doing work um, in the innovation space. So um, this is... Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's not a very thick book. It's a pretty quick read. Um, the different colors of what 
uh, Dr. DeBono refers to as the hats, forces you to be play a certain role when you are trying to innovate. Um, that can be, you know, you're the optimist, you're the pessimist, you're the whatever. Um, and then you rotate the hats. So everybody gets a chance to kind of play. Some people are the builders, some are the, 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 the rational thinkers. Um, so again, another, if you have not read this, you should uh, get this book. And again, um, it's not so much of an inspiration because, uh, you know, once, once you write it, you kind of get it. But it's another book that I actually keep on, on my shelf close by my desk to remind me about um, changing my perspective. Don't just think I can self, you know, innovate by myself and I can come up with really great ideas. I literally have to run through the hats and play all the different roles through that process. So it's more of a, you know, stick reading, seeing this spine on my shelf reminds me that uh, it takes more, you know, you, you're not going to innovate by yourself. It's a team. It is clearly a team sport. So now, as you know, I went through that. I, I went through kind of my architecture books that I use as inspiration, my design books, so the universal principles of design and then designing interactions. And then we got into the innovation and creativity books. Now, here are a couple of other books. These are more fun, but I think... Um, um, I love these books. I keep them handy. It just kind of makes me laugh. Uh, this one is the world's worst invention. It's the most stupid gadgets machines ever made. Now, this particular um, book um, is very graphically oriented. You may not always agree. Like uh, it says the Easy Bake Oven was a stupid, you know, it was, was not a great product. Uh, the Floating Bed. Uh, we got the hula hoop in here. Um, we've got, um, um, you know, different kinds of airplanes, car alarm systems. Now, this collection of books, it was put together by Jack Watkins. Um, I'm not sure you'll even be able to find this book because you can't tell, but I've got a torn off sticker here, which means it tells me that I got it off like the $1 bin at uh, Barnes and Noble or some bookstore, Borders, when Borders was still around. Um, and um, and so I probably pulled it up out of the bin. But again, um, it uh, what's really interesting is, is in some cases, you know, this book was done, this book's got to be 15 years old. Um, and so some of the things that they in here say are stupid or worst inventions, actually went on to become big successes. Be careful of saying that a, that, a, that a new product or a new invention or a new innovation is the worst because it may just be timing. When this version of that product came out, it may not be all that great, right? You know, people may think of the old uh, Yahoo site as being horrible, right? But then Google came along and replaced it with a better search engine. So even though this book tries to put a kind of a stake in the ground that says, you know, these, you know, these are the worst ideas, you know, that are out there. Um, in reality, uh, you have to be a little careful because uh, the timing may not be right. And after this book came out, a number of things in this book actually turned out to be really great ideas. So I use this again as um it's just a visual, uh, you know, set of ideas, things that you maybe thought about that, you know, went away because they didn't make it. But you never know. There might be new technologies that uh, all of a sudden uh, came out and uh, um, are now more practical today with today's technology. So, again, The World's Worst Inventions by Jack Watkins. And then... This is a book that uh, uh, is not so much, not in the, it's kind of in a similar vein as Worst Inventions, but it's also a book that uh, talks about things that is not about inventions so much, it's, but it's, it's also about human 
failings, uh, things that uh, just don't, um, you know, don't work out, you know, or humans got involved in it, right? So, you know, the, you know, the, the, these are all kind of funny pictures, right? You know, hard to see this one, but, it's, you know, it's a sign in the front of a store. It says, we're here to serve you, and their only hours are 10 to 2 on Wednesday. <laughs> or this one at a, I guess, would be at a hardware store where it says it's unbreakable, yet you can see the broken piece. Um, and again, this one is actually a funny, humorous book. Um, and, 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 and this one, you know, gets into just reminding us of just human nature and things that, um, we may think are, uh, funny. I mean, <laughs> this one is actually you know, hilarious, right? So this is Winnie the Pooh in a ring and it's called a poo splash zone and it's a toilet seat. So, um, so, you know, this is, uh, again, just reminding us of the uh, human failings of, uh, of uh, what goes on out there. No matter how well you think you've designed something, um, people can uh, you know, do, the, uh, do the unexpected with uh, whatever innovation, product, service um, uh, that you can think of. And so... Um, you know, this one's a little bit close to home. You can't see it, but that's a traditional sign that you see when you come into the state of Colorado, which is where I live and where my studio's at. It says, welcome to colorful Colorado. And it's pretty much white and gray. Welcome to winter in Colorado. So again, fail harder. This comes from the fail blog, um, dot org. Um, there's a similar book to this. If you don't have it, it's on the, um, the whole experience of autocorrect. So you go to send a text and it autocorrects it. Interestingly enough, my agent for my book, uh, Beyond the Obvious, is the same agent for that author, the author who came up with um, the autocorrect. And I've got the paperback version someplace. Um, I literally can't get past three or four without like laughing in hysterics. So you may want to check that book out also. But again, Fail Harder, um, failblog.org community. Uh, these are all the pictures and images that get posted up there. This book is a little old. There's probably been some more, even more humorous ones that have been uh, posted. So I wanted to kind of cover both the worst inventions and Fail Harder to remind you that, yes, you use these other books um, for inspirations, but you have to think about them in the context of how do you uh, how do you innovate, and so I wanted to just share with you these are books that I keep here right next close to my desk here in the uh, in the studio. So when I'm starting to kick off a new project, a new idea, uh, I'm mentoring or coaching uh, an organization. They need help with uh, maybe they have a kernel of an idea, but they're looking for some help on a. Uh, turning this product or this uh, concept into something that's going to be uh, big and meaningful. Um, and uh, these are just some of the books. These are, you know, I've literally got thousands of books, but I just picked these out to kind of give you a sampling, starting with the my visual orientation with things like Frank Lloyd Wright, going all the way through to um, books that are very more specific to innovation and creativity, but then also the humorous ones that remind us that we are all human. We try our best. Some things we come up with just aren't going to work. Um, in fact, maybe uh, in a future show, I'll uh, share that. And so if you've got books, things that you're doing that you use for inspiration, share them. Post, post a comment um, on the show here. Let us know what books or other things. Um, in a future show, I'll uh, start pulling together some other things here in the studio, give you more of a, of a view of the, uh, the, the innovation studio, how it's set up, uh, how I work on uh, new projects here, uh, tools that I have here, and uh, ways I go about starting with a blank sheet of paper and turning that into products and services. So you want to uh, 
but if you've got books that you find specifically inspiring, go ahead and uh, uh, post them in the comment. Would love to see them. And if you post in the comments, I'll reply to every comment you post. Thanks for joining us on today's show. One of the things I did want to share with you as we wrap this up today is, is that all of the books that we covered in today's episode, we will have all that information in the show notes. So you don't have to worry about trying to go back and listen and, and grab them, check out the show notes, um, and uh, we'll give you all of the information um, on uh, the books themselves. Okay. Um, if you're interested in um, experiencing uh, how uh, how I innovate, how I uh, ideate, how do I come up with ideas and then run those through, um, one is you can go back through the more than 15 years of content. I've shared everything here um, on the show. It's also available in my book, Beyond the Obvious, so you can find that at Amazon or you can go over to innovation.tools and you can order the book there if you order from innovation.tools i can also autograph that and uh, send that to you um but if you're interested in actually experiencing it uh live if you and your team have a challenge that you are particularly wanting to go after then think about uh setting up time for a disruptive ideation workshop you can go to disruptiveideation.com gives you all the information you can click a button and send your information in. Um, and the team over at the Innovators Network will um, reach out to you and uh, answer any questions you might have. And if it makes sense, we can do uh, virtual workshops. Now, I, you know, uh, I have trained a, a lot of people now over the years, and um, particularly uh, for those overseas, whether you're in... Um, in Central Europe or in Australia, New Zealand, we have people um, all over the world who are certified in the FIRE framework, which is the uh, the approach that we use. And uh, you can check that out. Um, if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about some of the projects, the innovation projects that I've done, um, and it's just a small sampling. There's not many up there yet. Um, uh, we're I'm debating about going back and trying to Re, you know, load up all of the projects that I've done over my career, but you get a good sampling over it. You can go over to techtrend.com. Uh, uh, Techtrend is my is the innovation studio. It is um, the uh, uh, the framework. Techtrend has been around since 1996, and that's how we did um, all the uh, all the work uh, for companies of all types, museums. Um, uh, I've designed lobbies for corporate headquarters to developing, um, you know, high tech products and services, everything in between. So you can go check those out over at techtrend.com. And with that, I'm going to sign off again. One favor I would ask of you is to please subscribe and like, and share. So let others know, um, about the show and give us some feedback. Let us know. Let us know what you think of the, the show today. Love to hear it. If you have books that inspire you, share them. Share them with the community. Post them in the comments. If you post them in the comments, I will watch that for those, and I will reply to each and every comment. So post, uh, post those up. Love to see what you find inspiring. And with that, we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Podcasting nonstop since 2005. This has been the Killer Innovation Show on the Innovators Network. This show is distributed by the Innovators Network. For more information and other great shows and content, visit theinnovators.network. <laughs>